Hello and welcome back to the Villa Filler podcast. I'm riding solo today. I'm just about recovered from Leisure Vorsal. What a trip that was. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about Aston Villa versus Le- or Leisure Vorsal versus Aston Villa, I should say. 3 2. Not an ideal start to our Europa Conference League group campaign, that is for sure. However, I feel like we've got one of the more difficult aspects of this competition out of the way. We've played our first game at what I can only describe as the most intimidating atmosphere I've ever witnessed. The Legia fans were absolutely phenomenal. And you could tell that the players, they did not have... I don't I don't want to say they didn't know what they were getting themselves in for, but I think they had a pretty rude awakening when they heard just how loud the Legia fans were and it didn't really give up. They sort of took a minute after we scored because I think we sort of managed to bamboozle them because they were so giddy and high, the fact they went 1-0 up and then 2-1 up against us. But the fans were, were so important for Legia in that game and they really did just... They, I think they intimidated our players and it's something that we're going to have to get used to. I mean, it was a 30,000 seat stadium, a, a beautiful stadium, uh, plenty of loud fans that, again, they were, you know, they were phenomenal. The TIFO before the game, welcome to the jungle, the flags, the coordination with the chanting, the the Poznan that they did as well. It was, it was remarkable. It was a sight to behold and I think English football needs to take a, a hard look at itself because I don't think we'd ever see an atmosphere like that, certainly at Villa Park. I think it was absolutely astounding. Um, but it's, I mean, it's a frustrating one because you have to, I mean, yeah, generally you need four wins really to get out of a group, don't you? You need 12, but if you get 12 points on the board, you're generally pretty good. And I think our group showed with how Alkmaar was 3 nil up and then they go on to lose 4-3 to Zerinsky, that it's going to be a lot more difficult than I think myself, Dan, and all of you listeners perhaps may be expected. And I know West Ham, I'm pretty confident in saying that they didn't lose a single game during the Europa Conference League. So they made it look pretty easy. Um, but we're going to have to get, we're going to have to make sure we get ourselves back on track in a few weeks when we've got our first game at Villa Park. But I mean, just to talk about the experience again, I'll get onto the game a little bit later on. Amazing to see, you know, so many familiar faces over there. You know, our away support is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, the vibes at Molly Maloney's were brilliant. The, uh, I, I thought the, the buses that were put on to get us to the ground were good, uh, sort of questionable, getting us away from the ground and with the lock-in and all that kind of stuff. But generally, I, th- I felt like the experience was, was good. I felt like, you know, the the police did all they could to ensure that we didn't get our skulls caved in, which is all we can ask for, really. And I know people were frustrated after the game with the sort of two and a half hours by the time we were all actually out and back um, or starting to get back to the pubs. But, um, I mean, they had to make sure that we was we was pretty safe from the uh, Leisure fans because I, I know that they were, they were trying to get down to that little alleyway, which we were sort of being forced down to get the bus um, but other than it just taking a long time, I thought it, you know, obviously a lot of us pretty, pretty confident saying everyone made it back safely, uh, which is obviously what you want to hear. Uh, and yeah, I mean, my first European away game, watching Villa, I've seen a few games abroad, just like being on holiday. I mean, back in March, I was at, I was at San Siro for Inter Milan Juve, as you guys can see there, I've got the Inter scarf in the background. And I remember coming on the podcast and speaking to Dan and saying that I felt like that was the most incredible atmosphere I'd ever witnessed. The Davide d'Italia, the Inter fans, they weren't even watching the game. They was just so loud. They were just, all they all they focused on was creating noise, creating atmosphere to help the team get back into the game. It wasn't meant to be in that game, but I thought that would be the best atmosphere I'd ever see. And I mean, Leisure absolutely killed it with probably about 30,000 less people when you compare the, the stadium sizes and whatnot but they were absolutely brilliant and I, I do think I've seen a lot of debates about the team selection and whatnot and you know I think we said before the game that we should have gone full strength and I mean it's easy to say that now hindsight 2020 as well but 
I just, I I can't help but feel like the, the players that were out there should have been able to get the job done. And I can understand, you know, it's, it's a debut for long. Like Callum Chambers hasn't played a lot of football. The back four, therefore, is immediately unsettled right from the start. Um, Bubakar Kamara just didn't seem to play as deep as he usually did. And I saw you guys, I, I'll be the first to admit, I was pretty passionate, I think. Oh, emotional, I think is probably the, the, the word to say after the Crystal Palace game. And I, I saw a lot of people disagreeing with my criticism of Tillemans. But if I'm being completely honest, he has not done anything so far in the Premier League when he is, has come on uh, since the season started, you know, and, and I guess in the Europa League, in the Conference League. He's not pulled up trees to me. He's not particularly impressed me. I don't feel like he's looked after the ball very well. I was, you know, and I even said in the in 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 that post Palace podcast, apart from the two the the penalty that he wins and then the ball to Diaby for Bailey's goal, he didn't do anything else. I acknowledged that those passes were great, but it just he he doesn't look after the ball as much as I would have expected him to, and have have seen that he's been able to as well, and he just doesn't get around the midfield enough. And when Buba sort of wasn't in a, a deeper position where we saw him where he could have a bit more control of of the game when we're sort of out of possession or sort of we're you know the the opposition are in transition we're looking to come and defend we didn't necessarily have the, that protection that Buba generally provides us which I think also didn't help us as well but Tillman just doesn't really get about the pitch all that well um so it is kind of worrying um I mean, I say all of this. I still expect us to. I, I still expected that team to get the job done, and we scored the two goals. Um, John Duran. I mean, wow, what a kid! What a kid! You can clearly see that there's just something about him. You know, you, you get a feeling about a player. You just kind of, you just know that they're destined for good things, and it feels like every time I'm seeing Duran, I'm seeing a little bit more ability-wise. He's improving. There's, you know, better decision making in the games um and I thought as well the chance Duran ba- Bailey puts the ball into the box Duran takes a touch spins the defender manages to get a shot away where his shirt's actually being pulled if and this is something that he'll obviously develop but you know you've got to go down there because you've been fouled um and I admire him actually weirdly for staying up and trying to get the shot off and it was obviously it was straight the keeper decent save from the keeper though but if, if Duran goes down, there's no doubt that that's a penalty. But again, it's like little things like that he'll pick up with more game time and sort of just becoming more streetwise. Um, but the header was fantastic. That was a great goal. Zaniolo setting him up almost with that long shot. The power he got behind that was absolutely remarkable. That was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. And I thought Nicola was good in... Uh, in sort of trying to link the player but as, as we mentioned in the other podcast he's constantly trying to play these sort of one touch passes really quick because he's not the quickest player when he sort of gets off and running he's not got the pace of Leon or Musa so I think he's constantly looking to make make sure that he can bring other players into the game as quickly as possible get on his bike and, and maybe get on the end of something um, but Again, like you know, he's not really played all that much for us. Relatively new signing. It was a scratch team, but I, I still just can't shake the feeling we could, we should have done better. But again, the atmosphere was just so intimidating. I mean, you guys will know uh, any anybody who sort of follows me on Twitter or Instagram or anything like that. Um, over the summer for work, I was I was out at preseason tour. I was covering games. I was pitch side in huge eighty thousand seat stadiums. And I mean, we've all been there as a spectator. We've all sat at Villa Park or wherever it may be and chanted and sung and shout and everything. But I didn't realise just how loud it is when you're actually down on the pitch level. It's deafening. You can't hear yourself think. And the atmosphere that they created, I I don't understand how the, the, the Villa boys were able to communicate with one another. It was absolutely deafening. Um, again, just the most phenomenal atmosphere that I've been a part of and I hope that we could even replicate an ounce of that at Villa Park in the Premier League in the Europa League in the Conference League wherever we may be performing because that was just absolutely astounding and 
it's difficult to it's difficult to be too like over analytical about what happened because you know they just caught us on the break and it was you know first goal is a case of Luca Dean just losing his man second goal a similar thing but on the other side with Kashi um, not Kashi with Chambers sorry and I mean the third goal I'm seeing a lot of Callum Chambers slander for the third goal but in my opinion at the at the moment in time where the Legio striker is bearing down on Esri he's got defenders either side of him in Chambers and Longley fucking nail him man just take him down take the yellow card you're not going to get yourself sent off there you have to engage Esri backs off and then it's too late because you know then he's in the box he takes it away from Esri around Chambers ball goes in via Emmy's hand obviously a very frustrating way to concede but you just have to engage with that further up the pitch don't allow the, don't allow them to run directly at you that's was a really frustrating one to concede but apart from that I mean you know we we sort of we tried we tried right until the very end to create chances Musa has a chance where he tries to lift it over the keeper obviously there's the Bailey one as well really good footwork and I, th- I felt when Bailey did that ball roll in the box, we'd finally actually managed to unlock them with a bit of skill because we were sort of spreading the play. We weren't able to unlock them, but we actually sort of went a bit direct, used a bit of skill, managed to manoeuvre around the defence. And as, as I say, as soon as that ball roll happened, I thought that this was it. Maybe, you know, we were going to get the, the equalising goal and we can leave with a point and I'd have been absolutely made up. Wasn't meant to be. I mean, the JJ chance as well. Again, it's hard to be critical. He's been out for so long. He's going to be rusty, but you you have to at least put it on target, JJ. You have to at least put it on target. I know that that will have kept him up at night and probably still is, especially ahead of our trip to Stamford Bridge. But it's, it was good, nevertheless, to have JJ back. And I think, you know, as I say, it's lessons learned for Unai. I think he's learned a lot about the squad. And it's important to emphasise the squad as well, because even Unai said in his post-match press for that, you know, it's not about 11 players. It's about the 25 in the squad. It, we would be completely naive and stupid to think that the same eleven could play in, on a, an attack on all fronts and maintain the expectations that we as a fan base has set for them as well. I do genuinely think an eye was on tomorrow's game against Chelsea and I can understand why because I think there is a very good chance that we go and get three points at Stamford Bridge just based off how poor Chelsea have been. But I, I think you could have given Watkins, Diaby, Dougie, Kashi an hour starting bring them off then and then you know they're hopefully potentially able to go and start on the Sunday at Stamford Bridge but it Unai clearly didn't see it as that way and again I can understand why he rotated it's just a bit frustrating with hindsight but um I mean just to talk about Chelsea again I feel like we have to go and win it would be so villa of us to actually go and and get a win after after you know sort of not messing up but not 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 being able to deliver in our first in our return to European group stage football it'd be so typical for, t- for us to go and blow away Chelsea and I think that you know they're having teething problems with with Maurizio Pochettino and just trying to find the right system and where to play all the players that they've signed so I think we're going to be well drilled I think we're going to get the points I, that's as much as a preview I'm going to do I think I do genuinely think we're going to win this um I'm just a bit short for time and I'm extremely tired. But what a past couple of days that we've had. Poland, what a beautiful country. I'd never been, but I'll definitely be back. Warsaw, great. Krakow, even better. What a beautiful city. And uh, I just look forward to wherever the Villa are taking us next. Uh, obviously, it's Alkmaar. It's the next away trip, not too far from Amsterdam. Um, but yeah, I hope everybody who travelled you know, was safe, had a good time. Uh, and I hope that we can make up for for the defeat tomorrow against Chelsea. Um, guys, it has been a pleasure. I prefer, I much prefer doing this with Dan, but uh, Dan is currently on holiday. So Dan, I hope you guys are having a fantastic time and I hope to get the points tomorrow. And regardless of the result, I will be back at some point to talk us through that game. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe and up the villa.